Welcome back to some new r slash petty revenge stories, where people share small victories over those who fronked them. I hope you had a great day. The first story is called Reserved Places. My company is one of many that works for a government agency. There are like 10 to 20 different projects, each with their own team, so I don't know most of these people. Access to specific working environments is done through terminals, specifically set up in rooms, and the demand for the terminals is pretty high. It's first come, first serve, so basically by 9 am, every terminal will be in use or reserved by people leaving their bags or laptops there. Also, there's a scarcity of power sockets, so like terminals, they get taken up quickly. It's not a big issue, but it is annoying when your laptop dies and you need a charge. The worst offenders are people who just permanently leave something to reserve a terminal. They leave a jacket on the chair or a water bottle on the terminal, as if it's their own office. Officially, you are not supposed to do this, but people do it anyway. One such person has pretty much dominated their terminal as her own. Got a jacket on the chair, got a water bottle on the terminal, even has her own laptop charger just left there. One day, I was using a different terminal but needed to charge my laptop. She wasn't around, so the terminal was unused and her charger was just taking up a socket, not charging a laptop. So I unplugged her charger, coiled it nicely and put it on her terminal and plugged in my laptop charger. And then I went for lunch. When I came back, I found my laptop unplugged and her charger plugged back into the socket. And that just really set me off. I'd like to say I had some grand scheme for revenge or something like that, but it was simple. Just wait till the workday ended and people started leaving. And then, after she left, I just unplugged her charger and took it home. Guess who has a new Dell high power USB-C charger at home? I didn't even know my phone had a super fast charging option. The next story is called Trawling a Bully. A few months ago, I landed a job as a customer service rep at a company. There was this colleague, let's call her Karen. Even though we are on the same level, she liked to think of herself as my boss and would constantly micromanage me, making up stupid rules and force me to follow them, etc. One day, I finally couldn't stand her and called her out on her behavior. She got upset and went to complain to the manager, who then stepped in to resolve the conflict. I could tell the manager was on her side, but pretended to act fair and unbiased. Ever since this incident, Karen would occasionally throw shades at me, be passive aggressive at me and pass work that was supposed to be hers to me. Basically, she would do all these little things just to annoy me and make my working day unpleasant. Despite me trying to ignore her, she'd keep coming at me, because she knew her friends and the manager would side with her. And then one day, she purposely found an excuse to cause another huge drama, and the manager sided with her again. I couldn't take it anymore and quit on the spot. After about two weeks, I was still pretty angry with how she ruined my job. I decided to at least do something to take revenge. Where I live, Recruiters and HR would often approach job applicants or any individuals open to work via WhatsApp. Karen's LinkedIn profile showed that she's open to work and I have her phone number. So I decided to approach her by pretending to be a recruiter by using a second phone number that I have. I approached Karen with this fake identity and told her that we were hiring a customer service rep position. I made up a job description that was similar to her current job but with slightly better compensation and benefits. Once she said she's interested, I gave her a job application form and some customer service writing tests that I created to make it more believable. Also, with her job application form, I now have more of her personal info that I might be able to use in the future. After that, I scheduled an online interview with her on the day after tomorrow. When the day of the interview arrived, I texted her about an hour before the interview saying that upon our background check, we found that she had been engaging in workplace bullying. So we would not move forward with her application. Obviously, she was baffled and went, what? I didn't reply. She then said, this is nonsense. I'm gonna check with them. Again, I didn't reply because she's the type of person where the more you talk to her, 
the more she's gonna come back at you. She likes arguing. And the best way to annoy her is to ignore her, so that she doesn't have a channel to vent. I could already tell she's fuming, whether she asked her manager or not. That's still a win for me. If she asks, then her manager will know that she's thinking of resigning, which will create an awkward situation. If she doesn't ask, then she's gonna feel embarrassed that someone out there knows of her toxic behavior, and she has no way to defend herself. The last story is called 10 years. The company I work for started out being family owned and treated the employees great. Casual dress code, easy going. I was young and it felt more like going to hang out with friends versus going to work. I was a shift supervisor at the start. All the calls got answered. Work was completed on time and everything was very laid back. The last family member passed during my sixth year and a new board of directors took over, and everything went corporate overnight. Button-down shirt, dress pants, no sneakers. The team I managed was all tech support, non-customer facing, so forcing them into dress shoes and dress pants seemed dumb. This was the start of my disgruntled nature. One of our CEOs, who had an office in our building, was so petty, he would sneak into the call center on the weekends, when the rest of the office was closed take off his shoes as to make no noise and in his stocking feet sneak in the back door of the call center to look under desks to make sure nobody was wearing sneakers and complain to me and my manager when he found somebody. I got a new manager. He was vastly untechnical and micromanaging. A very very annoying man. He was also very very passive. He'd do something stupid, I'd yell at him face to face in his office and he would say nothing. Then, after sitting down at my desk, I would get a strongly worded email about our interaction. Along with the new corporate overlord changes, the company got super cheap, unless it was managers meetings or special locations, where they could put on the public appearance of being a family friendly place to work. Cue the company's 10 year anniversary. All the big wigs came down to our office. A few fly in from other states. They have a huge sheet cake that has the name of the company and 10 years written on it. It was sitting unguarded in the cafe. As I was walking through, I noticed nobody was around. I grabbed a knife from the table and cut a perfect square out of the middle of the cake. And then I ate it with my bare hands. I washed my hands quickly of frosting and other stuff. A few minutes later, our CEO, flanked by his cronies, came storming through the call center, yelling that he wanted to know who ate the cake. They had a professional photographer, who was going to take a photo of all of them behind the cake for the local newspaper. And now the 10 years and a huge chunk of the company name is missing. I sat quietly and said nothing. In fact, this is the first I've said anything about this in 15 years. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. And if you have time, watch another one of my videos. And now, I hope you have a great day. See you soon. Bye bye.